that button? All right. I'll go get batteries. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody, if you could just uh, grab a seat. We're going to get started. We had a few more presentations come in at the last minute. And if you don't know, uh, I'm Doug Miller. I host the, the forum with the Matsu Burrow. Um, and we're just trying to fill seats a little bit up front just because we're live streaming. So all 10 viewers out there in, on the web are watching the forum right now. Um, and that's a technology that we're actually testing out. We're going to present on that at 930 today. Um, okay, good. That's why everything's at a bit of an angle as well. We have a camera, just so you're aware, that's a camera over here. And Mike Jamaleski with Radio Free Palmer is kind of helping us out with the tech today. Um, and so he'll be actually showing the room here as well as the screen. Um, if you guys want to know about public Wi-Fi and tap into the WebEx, we're also on WebEx today. So people on WebEx are seeing the presentation as you see on the screen. Um, and then we have the public Wi-Fi and the password there, MSB public, if you haven't tapped into that before. Um, what we quickly try to do is we have a kind of a packed 30 minutes or 25 minutes before our first presentation at 9 o'clock. So what we often do is do a quick round of introductions. Um, then we'll have a brief update on our state geo portal uh, with Jack and then uh, a little bit about training and today's theme of the topics today from Eric Wyatt, IT Director, Matsu Burrow. So real quickly, Doug Miller, I'm with Wasman and Associates, been working with the Burrow a couple of years on the Smart Communities Forum. And um, I think we'll just go ahead and I won't pass the speaker around. Kenny? So this is Kenny Kleewine with the Matsu Burrow. Jack Horner, Matsu Burrow. Thanks, everybody. And then, so real quickly, we're just going to get into a couple brief updates with Jack on the Geo Portal. And Morning. So, um, among other things, we have a bunch of uh, working groups, um, and I'm the co chair for the uh, Portals and Data Working Group. Um, the other co chair is um, Ann Johnson. Um, we are actually a, uh, a joint working group between the Alaska Smart Communities Forum, this group, and the Alaska Geospatial Council, uh, which is mostly headed by DNR. Um, anyway, um, among the biggest news we've got is that um, after long last, we actually have our own self-hosted portal. Um, I'll, we have uh, 
address is yet uh, available later, but uh, here it is. As you can see, it's uh, still a work in progress. Um, but uh, once we get it populated, um, it should be uh, helping us uh, show off some of the uh, maps and apps that the uh, uh, that uh, are available throughout the state. Now, the idea behind this is this is a portal of portals. Um, the idea that we can show off um, uh, maps, apps, and data that uh, are made by a variety of groups around the, the state, not just any one. Uh, now, this does not alleviate the uh, system that we had before, which uh, the open data portal, which Thought I had that up. Um, so, um, which is specifically data, which is what you would need for um, actually uh, creating apps yourself. Um, this is where you would pull in base maps or uh, data streams, that sort of thing. Uh, similar technologies, but one is self-hosted by the organization, and the other is um, in the cloud with Esri. Uh, this is something that, um, while they're actually both using the same software. Uh, one is available on the cloud, the other is not. Or I should say, one is available for all implementations, the other is not. Um, this has been done, uh, or most of the work here was done by uh, Kenny Wood, uh, who is under the state geologist at DNR. Um, other things that we've got is um, Aaron Palmer uh, is working on a script to kind of clean up the metadata and allow for uh, mass updates, and then um, uh, that's from the DNR side, and Kenny Kleewine is uh, working on that uh, from our side. Um, the address, uh, the quick addresses, um, I'll mention them, but uh, uh, as I said, we'll have them available on slides later. Uh, the geo portal um, is just geoportal.alaska.gov. And then the other one has a longer address, but uh, you can get to it by going to matsugov.us slash geoportal slash data. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, good. So again, I'm uh, Eric Wyatt at the Matsu Borough, um, IT director. So the reason uh, that we are having this uh, geo portal or data portals is uh, this is information that uh, you know we as government agencies are collecting, but we're collecting on the taxpayer dime. This information belongs to all of us. And so we want to uh, have a way to get to it very quickly and easily so that the, the people who are entrepreneurs and decision makers can get to this data quickly and they can use it to do great things for our community. So this is kind of a... Um, a central theme to what we're talking about here today as uh, smart communities. Is that, uh, it covers everything that, do you wanna, okay? Um, well, um, hopefully we can get these scripts working. We've got a couple meetings, uh, both with uh, the portal working group and its, uh, its uh, parent working groups. Um, but I uh, hadn't really prepped that, so. Sorry. So we've been trying to get apps set up and the platform set up. Can you talk about it for the first year? Absolutely. So one of the things we've been talking about at these uh, smart community meetings, these forum meetings, is, is partnering with multiple agencies. Um, and that, this has been a great success there. So the, the borough and the DNR have been uh, partnering to stand up these portals and get this data out. So uh, big, uh, big congratulations to the group that has been doing that. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm with the world's greatest exemplar of what the French call stairway wit. Um, so you know, once I get out the out the door out the door and halfway down the stairwell, I was like, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, so what we've got in the next 90 days actually is uh, we've been uh, working a lot with. Uh, GIS data, um, mapping type stuff. But one of the other things that we are uh, work, working on is actually enabling uh, non-geolocation data. Um, and so we, I've actually got um, uh, contacts with uh, state finance and um, 
elections. Uh, and then we actually also have some uh, non-geolocated data at the borough that we want to get in there as well. So that's another big step for. Thank you, Jack. Good. So uh, uh, next, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to kind of queue up a little bit here, kind of the theme of uh, today's Smart Community Forum, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, training here a little bit. My intro slide, you can see, is uh, is a view of our open data portal here at the Matsu Burrow. Actually, the slide I used at our last assembly briefing, and you recognize the little picture over there in the corner? That was our, our first Alaska uh, Smart Community Forum meeting up at Government Peaks. So anybody here that had attended that one? I see quite a few people that have attended that one, so. What is this now, number nine we're, we're on? So, um, okay, so to queue up today's uh, topics, um, a quote from surveys of CEOs saying, one of our top obstacles uh, to our organizations is talent. And so, you know, as we're talking about uh, all this new technology and smart communities, one of the things that has to follow is a bunch of smart people. And that means we have to continuously be um, training our, our personnel, okay? I'm gonna tell you a little story about uh, why training is important. This was me as a kid. I was out in the woods cutting um, firewood for the family uh, uh, home to heat, heat our home. I got my cross cut saw out there working away Dad comes along and he says, hey, I got this new thing. It's called a chainsaw. He says, why don't you try that? So he gives me the chainsaw, and I'm out there working away with the chainsaw. He comes back after a little while. He says, how's it going? And I said, it's horrible. I can't cut as much uh, with this as I could with my crosscut. Give me my crosscut back. And then he starts it. So new technology is great, but um, until you learn how to use it, it's really useless. And so training is, is vitally important. And of course, once he trained me, there, there I was. That's, again, me as a child, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so that's why uh, we're talking today about, uh, you know, we're gonna deliver a lot of new uh, technology, but unless, not, not just the IT departments, but unless all of the organization knows how to use those tools, it's uh, kind of useless. So we need to talk about the digitization of the workplace and then transforming our talent base so that they can use that. We've got a lot of things coming, a lot of new terms, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, blockchain. What do they mean? How do you use them? Uh, in the uh, Matsu borough, the IT department uh, has put together a strategic plan and one of our goals within our strategic plan is to provide tools and training to elevate the maturity of our organization. So uh, that's what we're all about around here. There are challenges to this, obviously, to all of us. We all face these. We never have enough money. That's the first thing. When we start having tight budgets, oftentimes training is one of the first things to go, but we simply can't afford that. We have to continue to uh, train our people. Time, uh, learning styles. Some people learn in classrooms and with uh, personal interaction. Some people do well with books or online. Everybody does things a little different, so we have to deliver training in a variety of ways. Um, we in Alaska sometimes have a difficulty because this training isn't available up here. It's not as readily available, so we have to bring trainers up, which usually means more money. Uh, timing of our training, if we provide the training too soon, we forget. If we provide it too late, uh, people might start using the tools and develop bad habits. I'll go back to the chainsaw, out there with a the chainsaw doing this. That was my bad habit. So, uh, and then uh, location and sustainment of the training. Uh, one of the things that we are working on at the borough right now is upgrading one of our platforms. And one of the lessons learned is we didn't have sustainment training after the system was installed. So over time, we've kind of lost uh, the knowledge of how to use that system. And as we upgrade it, we're going to improve that. So I wanted to talk about a few of the current efforts. Um, uh, as we have talked about uh, our partnership with the Matsu Borough and the DNR, one of the other things that we did is we uh, put on some ESRI training for ArcGIS here at the borough. We couldn't fill all the seats, so we invited DNR to come up and, and join us. And then when they put on some other training, we went down and joined them. So that allows us to combine our resources between two separate agencies and get um, the training that we need. <clears throat> in the uh, borough, 
We've set up a new training room in the basement of this building, providing additional training. Uh, I talked a little bit about the uh, project that we're working on. It's a system called Govern. One of the lessons learned is we didn't do proper training at the beginning. We didn't have sustainment training. So we're going to learn that lesson and we're going to continue on. Um, a lot of other training efforts that have been going on around the community, and I want to uh, point one out in particular. The UA Matsu, uh, we met Dr. Harry Banks here just a, a moment ago, has a, a computer systems technology department out there. He has put together an advisory council, and on that advisory council, he asks the community, what kind of skills do we need to sustain our workforce going forward? And so uh, we sit down and we talk about this is what we need in organizations like the borough or other uh, uh, commercial organizations, and we let him know this is what we see on the horizon, so he makes sure that he's got the classes that are, are doing those kinds of things. Um, smart community today, we're going to talk about uh, UAM, UAA LMS, so Adam's going to talk to us about that. Um, Jim's going to talk to us about uh, BIG and, and developing our talent and what uh, commercial options are available for training. And the, the Geomatics uh, group is here as well today to uh, talk about what we've got available for training in that area. As an offshoot of this uh, particular group, uh, we had an opportunity where we can take some of these tools that the borough is providing and uh, show them to some of the local commercial companies. And so, um, Steve Colgan, thank you for bringing the group in uh, last week, and he brought the home builders in and, and had us show them some of the new data and how to get to it, like Jack just described, and some of the new tools that the GITS team has been um, putting out, show, uh, show that group of people how to use those tools so that they can do their work more effectively. So that's been an offshoot of, of this group, and I think a uh, great success. Okay, so that's what I've got for an intro, and any questions before I turn it back to Doug? So, and this is a couple more minutes, and we'll have Adam come up here in a, in a couple minutes. We have, uh, for those of you, who is, who is new to the forum? What's our first time being at a forum? Okay, yep, so we got at least 10 or 12 folks. Um, and so I wanted to say is we have a website that's set up for all the documentation, the presentations, and, and links, and so forth that we've covered in prior meetings. So there's been a, a bit of a storyline. We actually had a demonstration um, in January that showed how to use the, um, the platform that Jack was just kind of showing um, as far as building your own maps with your own, uh, in that case, an RTIS online um, free account. So it, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get accustomed to how these, uh, how you might use it yourselves, but as well as DNR, um, uh, Muni Anchorage, uh, Matsu Burrow, they all have their platforms and the other uh, departments have their own platforms uh, that are already pre-staged with apps of, of all kinds of variety. So um, if you've not seen it in the last two years, all of those pr platforms have come really far along in terms of the applications uh, that are really, um, that have hosted data of a particular nature and you can click through and there's plenty of storyboards as well, particularly from Matt Sue Burrow that I've seen. Um, the last couple of months. The forum, this, these are this, uh, the success factors for the forum. It got set up two, two years ago. And so really what's the, a lot of the tenets are livability in the community, economic growth, more transparent and efficient government. The cameras today are a little bit more about that transparency. Um, more engaged citizenry as well as more informed decisions. Um, trying to get more information. This is what Eric has talked about the last couple of years. I got all this information. How do I get out there? So these are just different avenues to get that, that information out there. Same thing for Anchorage. If you don't know, they have a, they have a, a, a great geo uh, platform as well as a, a open data platform. Um, they're usually hosted separately. So that's why Jack was talking about we have geospatial based information oftentimes uh, through a provider, oftentimes a technology, say Esri. Um, and then they also have the open data that could be on any number of platforms, but it, sometimes it is, it's uh, more graphical pie chart related data without a spatial component. 
um, but they're constantly kind of so there there are two different things, but they're they're uh, uh, they're very meaningful in terms of uh, learning more about your community. For example, in Anchorage, you'll have information about maybe crime stats, um, uh, as well as I think one of the, one of the first ones they did was restaurant health inspections back the last 20 years. So if you really want to zero in on that, they actually have a geographic element to that as well, and you can kind of see the statistics. So anyway, just be aware. Um, so on the forum success, obviously. We've had, this is our ninth forum. Uh, we usually have about 50 folks that are attending, 150 people that are invited to attend. Um, always looking to have more folks to attend and, and contribute their thoughts. It's about exchanging inf information and knowledge about new uh, techniques or adding your data. I talked to an organization that might actually want to contribute their data through their conservation group to the Matsu Burrow, and that's something that could be theoretically displayed through the Matsu Burrow uh, GIS uh, platform. That's what this one example. But it's data collected by an organization outside the Matsu Borough. Same thing the, the Anchorage uh, group does. Um, there is a trails committee, a uh, trails uh, group that does trails grooming, for example, on uh, ski trails in Anchorage. It's all done uh, by a volunteer organization, but they provide that data feed and data information regularly, I, I believe daily, to the, the city of Anchorage through a portal. And so Anchorage is able to display that information to everyone, but it's collected not by the city, but by a volunteer organization. And that, that takes a little bit of nurturing. They have a GIS point person, an open data point person at the city of Anchorage, just like they do here. But anyway, those are the opportunities. And I see a lot of companies or agencies here. Great to see the troopers here today. Um, or at least the, sorry, I'm gonna say fishing game, right? All right, so is I, just, I just went, nope, he's green. So we have green here today. But actually, it's one of the first um, you know, public safety presences that we've had at the forum before. And we've not had uh, EMS or fire yet, but those are oftentimes some of the, the, the biggest drivers for some of the information that they display. We saw that in Rancho Cucamonga and other organizations that we've had present in the past two years. It's, it's usually crime statistics. Um, uh, or other information that either police or fire want to get displayed out to the community, okay? Um, but anyway, that's just a, a little bit more about the roundabout information about the platforms. But are the forums successful? Are we getting knowledge? Are we having opportunities identified that are sharing information? We've talked about partnering agreements um, with Matsu Borough and the city of Palmer. Still in the works, a little bit closer. Well, it, and a little bit closer, we have, Eric's got to drive a lot of things here, um, but at the same time, too, it's going through some legal work and so forth, but Nate from the city of Palmer is the contact. I'm working with the city of Wasilla to perhaps have them engage here on a partnership, like an MOU, for the, so they can contribute their data for their community to the, the borough-wide platform here at Matsu. okay? So some of those things are still going on. And then, um, yeah, and that's just how well are we doing as a forum coming together so far, we're still having some success with these, and by the show of the group here, that's great to see the, that you're here, and we're always open to having comments and feedback about other content. I've already got half the agenda for August already kind of filled up with ideas, and welcome all the ideas that are coming. Um, real quick today, and we're gonna jump into nine o'clock, is the Matsu Borough has hosted this uh, forum for the past two years, My Time, Food, and so forth. Uh, today is our first time that we have uh, another sponsor, that's MTA, that's uh, helped sponsor the, uh, the food today. So that's uh, not a small cost, so we definitely appreciate that, and we actually invite anybody else who'd like to help sponsor um, part of the events going forward. That's how we make it sustainable. At 10 o'clock today, you're gonna hear a gentleman, uh, CEO of Vizius, who set up a, a forum somewhat like this four years ago in Austin, Austin City, UP. Um, you'll hear a lot more about uh, what they're doing. They've made it a sustainable model, much like a ro rotary uh, organization, right? So it's small membership fees that help pay for re regular meetings that they have monthly or even more often. Um, but he'll talk a little bit more about how they're able to make, sus make it sustainable. And it hasn't been a slow pro uh, progression for them there in Austin as well. And among, if you haven't Googled Austin City before, it's, there's quite a number of tech 
uh, organizations, uh, not just the Austin City UP. So, but I thought it was an interesting example that we got referred to to look at that might be for this organization. So enough of that. Um, what we'd like to have today is um, a little bit of presentation about the learning management system that they have at UAA and how, how extensible that has been for several years at UAA to have remote training and education. So with that, Adam. Hi, everybody. Uh, Adam Pollack, uh, UAA CIO. Uh, thanks, Doug, for, uh, for having us here uh, this morning. So show of hands, uh, how many of you have used an LMS as a student in a degree-seeking program? Okay. Got a few? Okay. So something for you all to consider, you know, as hiring managers or, uh, uh, you know, those who are training uh, folks in your organizations, uh, probably the majority of the folks that are coming in who've been uh, through a degree-seeking program and have earned their degree, uh, if they've you know, been in college in the last, you know, 10 years, they're probably used an LMS. And they're probably uh, very used to how they operate. Uh, and, uh, you know, in many cases, I'll, I'll show you some uh, um, information about satisfaction among students in LMSs. Uh, they, they uh, you know, enjoy the use of it. They find value in it. So just a note uh, on that. And uh, so the title here, uh, Doug came up with a great title, uh, you know, the kind of the bottom part there, I hope I can live up to it. Very fancy. So what's the primary purpose, uh, purpose of an LMS? The very basic uh, level, it's a repository. So it's a collection of information, uh, you know, think of you know, syllabus, um, learning uh, materials for the course. Uh, it's a place where a student uh, can go to find the core information about their, their class, uh, what's coming up, uh, what, they, what do they have to uh, um, you know, do next in the course. Uh, gives them some visibility into uh, um, uh, their course and how they can participate in it. But it's way beyond that now. So LMSs uh, really came into uh, their uh, wide use in the early to mid 2000s. Uh, most, I, I think pretty much all uh, colleges now use them in one, one form or another. It doesn't necessarily mean that all the instructors use the LMS within that, that college, but most colleges offer it now. But typically an LMS is purpose built uh, to, to ensure learning outcomes. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But there's you know, uh, professors like to study themselves, uh, and there's a lot of study in how they uh, are effective with LMSs. Uh, there, a lot of research has gone into uh, ensuring that they produce the learning outcomes that are desired. And there's a lot of work that, uh, you know, goes into a course ahead of time uh, by an instructor to ensure that those learning outcomes can be met. So, you know, another, I mean, this seems obvious, but an LMS has a course focus. So uh, imagine, you know, for those of you who uh, maybe didn't uh, have an LMS when you attended college uh, a while back, w where was the course focus? Uh, it was really around an instructor. So if you needed in more information about a course or where it was going, you had to talk to that person about it. There typically, you know, weren't any materials beyond, you know, a syllabus or, you know, the book that you have or, you know, maybe another handout but you, you didn't necessarily get to see where the course was going. You couldn't access your instructor 24 seven. I mean, that you had office hours or you saw that instructor in class. So really it was around the instructor as the focus or the class itself when you were in class. There wasn't this other component that, that made up your course and created a focus around that course that was available all the time. And that's what students have now and that's what they expect. And of course, LMSs are built to run real friendly on mobile. Uh, that's typically a, you know, a way that uh, students will uh, access their LMS. Uh, we, have, we have students often will access the LMS while they're in class, you know, on a mobile device. Uh, 
Another key component here is that the instructor has a lot of control over uh, what goes to the course. So some instructors may say, you know what, I'm gonna show you all of it ahead of time so you have a good idea of, of uh, what's coming up and where we're going. Others instructors may decide to only show uh, what's, uh, you know, what should go out to the students as the students are learning. So not to overwhelm a student, but to ensure that outcomes are met, you know, the, uh, many instructors will have a kind of a checkpoint, ensure that you know by this time, you know at this period, uh, you know, uh, so class starts in the fall. You know by September we should be at this point, uh, and 